I see myself as a student of modern literature uh, and my approach is to consider literature as a form of thought which is shaped by historical existence of human beings but which also works on uh, history. Uh, over the past uh, two decades my work has been primarily on literature written in the language Malayalam uh, which is spoken in Kerala region in South India. Um, and my focus has been on looking at processes of articulation, ideas of selfhood and the kind of public address in Malayalam literature and the way it has changed during this period of time. Of course, in this I am concerned with what you can call cultural and uh, historical processes uh, in a stratified and diverse society under conditions of colonialism. But my approach was actually to not let my research be determined by concepts like colonial modernity, which already come with a certain framework and look more closely at these processes of self-articulation. And now, uh, while working on this, I realized that this approach enables a closer focus on what I have described as processes of inhabitation. That is the way in which people live their identities, live their bodily experience, live their historical inheritance and the slippages and complexities that come up in this process of inhabitation. Here emotions become very important. Now in literary studies, one major um, approach has been to look at literature in terms of narrative structures, that is structures of storytelling. But sometimes the affective texture of a literary text, that is moments of emotional intensity in a literary text, they may actually be in tension with this narrative structure. It may even be the case that the narrative is like a prop or a facilitating condition for a certain play of emotions to happen. So I have looked, uh, especially in my more recent work, on emotions, especially the more destabilizing and difficult emotions like humiliation, grief, uh, etc. And this has uh, led to the kind of work I have come to do here. And in the case of uh, humiliation and in the case of grief, we are dealing with emotions which are essentially not agentive, like the person who experiences them is in what you may call a kind of passive state. Yeah. These are not action-oriented emotions, you could say, like whether you're mourning in grief or whether you are in a state of immobilization on account of humiliation, you could say that you are in a kind of state of uh, uh, non-agentive situation. And my current work here it has been prompted by uh, something which has become very important over the last few decades. That is an increasing visibility of death and near-death destitution in the public domain. So we see frequently images of uh, executions or uh, damaged bodies, bodily injuries, lynching, uh, public or political acts of suicide, many of these things have come very prominently into the public domain over the last two or three decades, all over the world and in India too. Yeah. Now, of course, in our present moment, uh, the COVID pandemic and the ubiquity of death has exacerbated this problem. But what I am talking about is something which is already there for the last two or three decades. And we can understand this greater prominence of death in the public domain in the light of what many political thinkers have called biopolitical power, where political technologies are applied at the point of human existence at a minimal threshold. That is, our mere existence itself becomes a kind of site for the application of power. But I am particularly interested in the kind of the forms of resistance or defiance that, that this gives rise to. When life becomes the point of application of power, it also becomes the space for forms of resistance and forms of refusal to emerge. You can see this 
in the foregrounding of helplessness uh, and sometimes defenselessness in forms of public protest, like for example hunger strikes, which actually put the body uh, on the line in its perilousness, in its fragility on the line. In these protests, you also see uh, not really energetic emotions, action-oriented emotions, but emotions which are more in a passive posture, where either you are actually in a state of grief or in a state of immobility or sometimes quiet resoluteness. Think about, for example, the, the protests which have happened in many parts of the world of families or mothers of disappeared people. Often they sit in silence or stand in silence somewhere. And recently there have been protests in India, like a year ago there have been a lot of protests in India against what was seen as an unjust legislation, uh, again by uh, women occupying a public space like a street in complete uh, quietness, uh, just sitting there, demonstrating their defenselessness as well as their quiet resoluteness. So these forms of protest, so these forms of defiance uh, interest me very much. And the question that I raise or the question that I think about in relationship to them is what kind of political subjectivity arises in these contexts. Here we need to think about political subjectivity at some distance from our traditional concepts of agency, which are related to action, which are related to intervention, subversion, transformation, etc. Here we are dealing with something which is actually more quiet, more subtle and more in alliance with emotions and a passive kind of positioning. I think about this in relationship to literature and some of the texts that I have been closely looking at in these uh, past months have to deal with forms of commemoration, sometimes uh, people through their sheer uh, existence becoming a kind of space for housing memories of unjust deaths, living as a kind of witness to a social memory which is denied a space in the dominant uh, articulations of social memory. These forms of literary imagination become very important in this kind of inquiry. And there, I feel that key to this uh, idea of political subjectivity is a certain conception of ethics, which is based on what I have tried to call permeability. That is the way in which we become porous and permeable to the injury of other people. And questions of justice become part of the way in which we exist as this site of commemoration and the site of witnessing. This is the direction which uh, my present research has taken.